This episode was recorded in front of a live audience where viewers voted for the ingredients. It has been edited down from its original runtime. A little bit. <laughs> here, here. I can. I'll I just can stay back here. I'll look tiny. Raise today. it up. Does that work? <laughs> I don't know what y'all are talking about. We're the same height. Okay, so we're making a beer today. We're calling it beer for the purposes of the general public on Twitch probably doesn't know what a brag it is. <laughs> <laughs> you want to get your water going? We probably should get the water going. <laughs> Would you like a beginner meat making kit? Uh, let's go to shop. That doing the most I order. <laughs> I'm gonna put like what do we got a gallon and a quarter. I'm gonna put like a half a gallon, three quarters of a gallon, the whole gallon. Yeah, it just depends, I guess, a little bit on what malt option they go with, because that's gonna be the first thing yeah, I'll just... that we vote on. Tree. I think a bracket is a mead. But for the purposes of this show, we're calling it a beer so people will know what it is. <laughs> Annie has a great question. What is the difference between a braggot and a honey ale? This is where people, everyone's trying to find the right answer, and there's, uh -huh. there's not one. There are too many subcategories right now. <laughs> so for those of you just joining us, these incredible folks right <laughs> here are the ones who decided our category today. We're going to brew today live, and you're going to vote for the ingredients from four different categories. I like this one. Under mead, they have a section called stuck fermentation. <laughs> <laughs> that never happens. Yeah, what? No. We've got to vote on what we're going to do with our malt slash grain. That's where we're going to start, and we need to get that into our liquid over here. We're not going to do any specialty grains today. We're going to do a single malt or single grain, depending on one of these other options. Uh -huh. So let's start here. First option is Munich. Are you familiar with Munich? I heard of it. I could not tell you the characters. I couldn't either. I've heard a lot of these beer-related things, but I couldn't tell you anything about them <laughs> other than I've heard before. So we're all learning today. Learning together. Secondly, we've got Pale Ale. Everybody knows that. Everyone knows Pale Ale. It's like a, like a malt slash a style. Third option is Bavarian Wheat. The fourth option that you can vote for Ooh. is we could do a, a kvass loaf of bread. with a whole <laughs> loaf of sourdough bread. Look at this beautiful loaf of bread. Sourdough starter has been going for like three years. Those are your options. I guess I should leave this up here. I would like to see some debate. <laughs> We could use one of these different malts. This is going to be a big boy beer. Because these are really good for like two, two and a half gallon batches. Mm -hmm. And we're making a one gallon batch. It's going to be a strong one. Sourdough loaf is in the lead right now. I think people just want to see it. And if we want to try this, then the loaf may not be available to use. I don't know what we're... Like if they want to repeat the recipe. Oh, yeah. It's got my sourdough starter in it. Mm -hmm. That I've kept alive for it. Quite a while. It does, looks like the Bavarian's taking over though. Who knows? So the third box is going to be honeys. And I think I've got a good selection of honeys. Everything you have, <laughs> other than maybe the stuff I brought, will pair well. <laughs> Man Made Mead here, which you can check out his website, manmademead.com, or go to YouTube, search for Man Made Mead, and click that subscribe button. He brought our wild card options today. We got some fun stuff in the wild card box yeah. today. Bavarian wheat is the <laughs> is the winner. I guess this will be dinner tonight. Would you like to get that into the pot there? We've got the stir 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 spoon, that was handmade from pine, from one of our uh, generous supporters, Casey, who is like a real doing the moster. Yeah, it hasn't expired. Hopefully, <laughs> having some trouble there. You know, we're working on it. We're working. <laughs> we're some sticky stuff. It is, it is sticky stuff. All right. It smells great, though. Does it? Oh, my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. Do some hops additions. It's like a good good. mac and cheese. It's got stretch. Oh, yeah. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to do a 30-minute boil. And so we're going to choose hops. We've got four hops in here. Top two that you vote for are going to go into our beer. I guess we should get to voting. <laughs> Your first option, we have Cascade Hops. Always great for a nice bittering charge. Some uh, Mandarina Bavaria might be a hella good choice. But you can't, you can't it's I, yeah, I, you I, I know. Do it, man. English Progress, another great choice. Natural name. So, <laughs> lastly, have you ever heard of Nelson Sauvignon? 
hops. I've never heard of most of these. Games. So this one is a rare hop to find. Ooh. Our local homebrew store had a couple packets of it. Mm -hmm. They apparently have like Sauvignon Blanc aromatics. Mm, interesting. Very wine-like character. So your options for hops, and remember we are going to choose the top two that you vote on. Mandarina Bavaria, Nelson Sauvin, Progress, or Cascade. Rom asked, did, did you say what progress brings to the table? Spring grass, herbs, fresh flowers with hints of dried mint. And then your Nelson Sauvin are going to have a very Sauvignon Blanc kind of whiny aromatic. Mandarina Bavaria, on here it just says tangerine grapefruit lime, but the hops handbook says that it has orange, like mandarin mm -hmm. orange aromatics. And then everybody knows Cascade is a pretty neutral hop, typically used for bittering, not necessarily uh, used for aromatics. Now remember, this is a braggot, so we also have a honey box yeah. coming up soon of honey. And there are honey options that span the realm of honeys. I just love how we're going to get through all three. It's going to be this tactical, really nice thing, and then the, the wild card. That's how it always <laughs> ends up. A single subscriber was the one who got to make the decisions for the wild card on that. Mm. And one of the things, we had this amazing coffee melon going, right? And one of the things in the wild card box was peppermint candy. And this, uh, this person chose the peppermint candies because they had recently made a peppermint mead and, and wanted to see how it would turn out in this. Oh, so wow. that one also has lactose and cracked black peppercorns in it. Or cracked, I think it's mixed peppercorns. I'm going to have to try that for you. Really. Yeah, you can try it right now. we got nothing but time. Yeah, you get a little bit of that, the peppermint on the aroma. Um, but it's not like super strong. The coffee, I think, because the coffee's there, uh -huh. it's like they're kind of battling. But it's kind of, <laughs> yeah. it's kind of a good thing. I thought the spice was real forward. I kind of like this. It's kind of good. That needs some honey. It needs some. It needs a back, a back sweetening. I think. But I'm trying to think what honey would pair well with that. Almost seems like an alfalfa. Yeah, would something rich, like something bright. No need. We've got some decisions to make about that one. It's, <laughs> it's clearing up now. I'll, I'll probably stabilize it in the meantime, yeah. and then we can make some decisions about But I do I do think it needs back sweeten. Currently, we've got Mandarina Bavaria and Progress out in the lead. And they're tied, though, right? Oh, they were tied a second ago. 9-8. I think we're going for a Mandalorian dragon today, <laughs> so it seems like. This is the way. <laughs> okay, so how much do y'all want to use? These are both one ounce packs, and we're doing a one gallon batch. We probably wouldn't want to use more than like six to ten ish grams of each. Yeah. Seven grams of each at five minutes for aroma or flavor. That's an interesting idea. So we'll do, let's six ish progress dry hop. Oh, dry hop. Y'all figure it out. I'm going to start with seven grams of mandarina for bittering, so that way we can get going on this. Pocket scale. <laughs> I, I love this little scale. But I use it for weighing out my, uh, my nutrients, and that very much feels like you're weighing out a little white powder. And for Halloween, you could be Walt. Yeah. I, I, yeah, I mean, <laughs> I've got a little bit of the aesthetic. Set a timer for 30 minutes. Ooh, that's a lot of curse words, man. <laughs> yeah, I know. I just went on a string real quick. <laughs> okay, what are we doing with the, the rest of these the hops? It looks like they want to use progress as a dry hop. All right. We will hold off on that. Again, do we you know, want to... Timer going for this? There's a 30-minute timer going for that. Do we want to do any other hop additions with the Mandarina Bavaria, or do we just want this 30-minute bittering? How about we do another 7 grams? And we'll do it at the 10 minute mark. What's happening? What is happening? Maybe it's like, you've forgotten about me. <laughs> <laughs> Have you ever used tea bags in brewing? Uh, like I haven't, honestly. These are cool. These are like little. I've got a little like cheesecloth. I wonder if I dry hop. Uh oh. Has it drawn too much power? It's pretty hot. I think we may have killed our uh, surge protector. So sad. 
sitting there. I know. It's like, <laughs> I'm a little concerned about that. How about while I am going and finding us another source of power, you move on to talk about our honey options. Okay. All right, y'all. I'm taking over the show now. Here are the honey options. You got buckwheat, which is this, this bad boy right here. I don't know if this is the one I gave him. I think he got his own. But buckwheat is super interesting to me. It's very crystallized. Really malty. Uh, well, not necessarily contrasting the well, malt we have, but malty, super weird wheaty. It's a acquired taste, to say the least. Tupelo. You guys don't don't know what Tupelo it is. <laughs> You're working again. Woohoo! You got gallberry honey. I don't know anything about gallberry. You're gonna have to. Uh, it's kind of fruity. And the other one that's not currently in a small batch is orange blossom. <laughs> so and that's all over here, like he pointed to. That we'll have to dip from. <laughs> we'll have to open the bucket because it's also crystallized. But we've got. Yeah, you got orange blossom back here. Keep in mind, you've got a wild card box brought by <laughs> Mr. Made Mead himself. That, uh. It'll be fun. It'll be, uh. It's gonna contribute, that's for sure. They want us to talk about gallberry. So I have. I a, can't, yeah, I'll have to try to right I have one open over here that we can try. Looks like that. Cruising, we are doing a boil. Let me uh, switch over to the brew cam. Boil cam. This comes from Honey Next Door. Mm. Reminds me of um. Wow, it's interesting. It's really pretty. Kind of, it's very pretty. It's very um. Like blueberry, blackberry to me. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It definitely has some blueberry notes. It's it's berry forward. Not a bad little honey. That's good. Dang. I need a glass of that from him. Yeah, it's good stuff. It's 16 minutes and 45 okay, seconds. Okay, so in six minutes, we'll hit it with that second hop addition, which is right there. And then dry hopping. How much do we want to do for the dry hop? Uh, so how about we do, what do you think about we do 10 grams of a six to eight, six to eight ounces? You mean six to eight grams? Definitely ounces. We're going ounces. Ounce, can you imagine eight <laughs> ounces? I want to taste the hops. <laughs> <laughs> you you would. I've had a four loco before. Has anyone else had a four loco? If you have, you uh, you can relate to the um, pain. We still have the honey coming up. Make sure you look at the poll to vote on the honey. Ooh, looks like people are voting. Uh, Callberry almost flipped with a B and the G on that. Really hoping for buckwheat. Well, you know, if we get some more people in here and start voting, there, there's a chance. There's a will, there's a way. <laughs> Where have we landed? We're getting close. Oh, Gallberry is way in the lead. Y'all yeah. don't think that Gallberry is going to get overshadowed by everything else happening here? Is that our hop edition? I don't know. That is our hop edition going in now. Wait, what's, what's this one? This is oh, that hop? one. Yeah, that one. The, no, this is dry hop. That one's going in now. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. We'll get there together. Come on, Twitch. Get like, it together, Twitch. Twitch has been around, what, like a decade? They can't fix mobile polls? Come on now. So, Goldberry. We chill our work down to, like, 110. And at that point, we pull a sample. We pull some with the, the squeezy doodle thing. Yep. And we put some in here and shake it up. That way it's not, like, crazy hot. But it's hot enough to help decrystallize this. Yep. Okay. We've got a plan. <laughs> Don't worry. Don't worry. We've We're got organized. a plan. So these are all amory flavorings, which means that they are, I mean, they're natural, like fruit, a fruit or other things. Uh-huh. So we've got French toast, option number one. So this guy right here, it says natural flavor on it, so natural flavoring. So uh-huh. Then we have white peach, which is... I believe from actual white peaches. Uh -huh. I think salted caramel. Salted caramel. Okay, can't really see on there, but salted caramel. And the last one is espresso or espresso, as some people might say. <laughs> They're not for everybody. I think that's the truth. I, you know, yeah. and but you can achieve these flavors in different ways. I wouldn't know how to get white peach to be honest. You know, trying to get salted caramel might be a challenge as well. 
I don't know how you oh, achieve French yeah. toast. <laughs> it's it doesn't smell bad. It just smells so strong. Yeah, I always forget that it's gonna like go up into my brain. It's like syrup. It tastes like syrup to me. This does. This tastes like maple syrup. Yeah. So French toast basically tastes like maple syrup. Good to know. Could be interesting. Oh, whoa. <laughs> that smells like something you would take to, to go night-night during a it, it cold or flu. Bit. Oh! That Stop. one. It tastes like, uh, you know, uh, peach rings? Yeah. Peach rings candy? That, yeah. Uh, it tastes it like smells it too, even. It just smells like mm -hmm. when you open those containers. Joe makes a good point that we can have too many competing flavors in here and that mm -hmm. white peach might be a good non-competing flavor just mm -hmm. a bright out of left field kind of flavor mm -hmm. to complement some of this your advice was not to add them in primary if i was doing like one of the other ones being a richer flavor mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. i would add it later for more control to know exactly how much i want to add and to more than likely keep the the aromatic side of it keep which is what a lot of it is yeah uh, there is also sugar in there, so it's a way to back sweeten slightly mm -hmm. if you want to do that without having. But then that you're you're uh, also introducing more sugar into the fermentation. So it really depends on the route that we want to go. How much would you recommend we add? Like a tablespoon? I would say one ounce. Is one eight ounce? ounce. Yeah. Okay. And it seems like white peach is taking over. White peach seems to be very popular there, huh? We're going to do our work chilling while this, this poll is going on. And how we're going to do that is with dry ice. Have you ever done work chilling with dry ice I've before? I've only seen you do it. So. <laughs> well, today's your lucky day, friend. This is kind of weird. Spooky. Can you see that? No, I can't see that. It really takes over the side of it, doesn't it? Like, like, a little, like a little nugget. To start out with, let me switch over to the brew cam so they can see what's happening. All right, here. for this. <laughs> and <laughs> and that's that that that's it. But this works really effectively. This is it. Yeah. Uh, I'm also gonna open this window because I <laughs> have found that while you're doing this, once that CO2 starts gassing off, you you get a little lightheaded. <laughs> a little bit. <laughs> So down from boiling, we are now at 173-ish. So you could probably add another More? another bit in there. So usually, CJ says, could you drop dry ice into a beer bottle and seal it to carb it? Technically, yes. However, I feel like that's a terrible idea. Something about that seems... Like, because you would need the right amount of dry ice, and you'd have to cap it quick and it would be creating so much co2 so quickly i would yep. worry that like it's not like a time release situation that looks pretty cool that does <laughs> it's real spooky real <laughs> it looks real cooler here than it does on camera <laughs> unfortunately amaretti white peach is our winner so i'll let you take the rest of these back to the man-made mead i'm leaving some stand. with you so gonna... <laughs> yeah i don't know how much of that i need See where that temperature is. We're in the mid 140s, coming down. Uh, and now is a good time while you're working on this. Now is a good time for us to talk yeast, because you have two yeast choices. Surprise, surprise! There's still a thing to vote on. I'm breaking out some yeast choices from our last beer episode. First up is. Imperial Yeast's flagship A07. Flagship A07. And our other yeast is Philly Sour, which I'm sure folks can tell you about. Check that out. We're down to 113. Darn close. Darn close to yeast pitch instead. Got a little bit of honey left. The Philly sour yeast is interesting since it's not it's not like a Brettanomyces. It's not it's not another it's not a bacteria or a, it's it's a yeast that creates lactic acid. Ah! And you 
<laughs> it's nice having a co-host, like having somebody else do all the work for me. It's pretty helpful. There it is. So we'll last a little bit. Um, want me to pop in the I microwave for so, um, 10 seconds? Yeah. yeah. So that, it looks like flagship. Oh, man, what happened? <laughs> what happened? <laughs> what happened? <laughs> oh, my what? gosh. That was in there for 18 <laughs> seconds, and it turned into this. Look at this. What happened? This is why we don't <laughs> use the microwave. You know we're just leaching all kinds yeah, of I was gonna say. BPAs into <laughs> our body with that. That's um, cool. great. <laughs> Smells like work. Yeah. That's sweet. It is thick. <laughs> yes. It is thick. <laughs> Some chew to it. We're gonna do the Imperial A07. Oh man, that is chewy. Yeah. <laughs> it's good though. It's got some like caramel, toffee, yeah. malty, mm. honey. That needs to go in here. We've got our dry hop. That's going in there. We'll have to fish that out at some point. I'm just gonna stay out of your way. Okay, okay. Noise. We're about at the one gallon mark. See? All right, all right. Well done. <laughs> well you done. If we had put the water in now, how yeah, it could have been? It would have been chewy. <laughs> Literally. Okay, so the next thing we need to do then is we need to get a gravity on this. I know y'all like to guess. I've got a 1082, 1087, 1076, 1087, 1070, 1080, 1092. <laughs> uh, uh, either that's a really inaccurate gravity reading, or <laughs> <laughs> so we may have to. I mean, we're gonna have to. It's a two gal batch. There's yeah. no way. Okay. <laughs> that's one point one five zero. Whoopsie. No wonder it's so. <laughs> it was thick. I mean, it's like syrup. What? Uh, what are we gonna do? The, that malt typically would be for a two to two and a half gallon batch. <laughs> As I said it was going to end up being thick. I didn't realize it was going to be like... <laughs> Over double <laughs> gravity. <laughs> Plum 50. I'm going to let you man the show. Fun fact, I um, have recently started a meet at um, 1.164. The four was estimated, but just to see if I can push the specific yeast to chew through the gravity. The yeast can go to 25%. So, um, needless to say, that yeast did not chew the, through the entire 1164 points of gravity. Uh, it, it, it died off early, but it made it pretty far. It made it to about 1.035. So, still impressive. There'll be a video out on that. Pushing a specific yeast up to 25% is very interesting. I don't think I've ever used this yeast before. The war gravity on the back of this, 1040, uh, 1042, 1 million cells, yada, yada, whatever, how much you add. We would have to add the entire pack of this considering uh, how high that was. That was pretty, pretty nuts. With the extra volume, does it need more dry hops? Probably not. We were probably going a little heavy handed on the hopping anyway. And I... What's, uh, what's going on over there? I'm trying to make sure you can see the friggin' gravity room. Thank you very much. <laughs> trying to help. 1.072 at a temperature of 71 degrees. Yeah. So. <laughs> I think this is going to be good. Yeah. I think this is going to be a solid bracket. I think there's a lot going, of good stuff going on in here. I'm a little concerned about the flavor contributions we're going to get from our white peach. So today we made a braggot. We used gallberry honey mm -hmm. and Bavarian wheat mm -hmm. malt. And we use Mandarina Bavaria hops, mm -hmm. both as a bittering charge and aroma addition. And then we've got progress in as a dry hop. Yes. And that's going to stay in there. And that's going to ride out primary fermentation. We'll just rack off from that. And then we have Amaretti peach 
that will or white peach specifically. Not not those yellow peaches. I feel like when they do this. Yeah. And that will go in secondary. I think the hint of that the brightness. I think that's you think that'll help. Yeah. That'll oh, well, I don't know. Give if it'll it a pop, help, but I think it'll be it'll do something. Mr. Mike has an interesting proposal that we split this batch after primary hmm. and one half gets yeah. the peach and the other half goes alone and then maybe you can come back and we can A B test the bottle condition bottles and see which we prefer. I like that. that. Sounds fun. I love that idea. So thank you, Man Made Mead. Where can people find you on the internet? Just look up Man Made Mead and click on whatever link you find. <laughs> <laughs> and you'll be there. I think I'm the only one, only Man Made Mead around. So Y'all have a wonderful weekend. Stay safe. Uh, drink responsibly. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>